Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health. At Merck Animal Health, we're shaping the future of animal health with pioneering science, connected technology, and insights-driven solutions to bring our customers an unparalleled portfolio of choices to improve cattle care and operational efficiency. We support you and your legacy by helping you meet the challenges of today with the innovations of tomorrow. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. We're gonna have a great show. Beth Reynolds from the Iowa Beef Center is gonna be here and we're gonna talk about feeding your cows, talk about supplements, we're gonna talk about grass, we're gonna talk about general cow nutrition. Thanks for watching, we'll be right back. When you spot BRD in your cattle, that's your golden opportunity to target infection and its associated fever with a single dose of Resflor Gold, the industry standard dual therapy. To learn more, talk to your Merck Animal Health rep or your vet and see label at resflorgold.com. Animals intended for human consumption must not be slaughtered within 38 days of treatment. This product is not approved for use in female dairy cattle 20 months of age or older, including dry dairy cows. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson and with me is Beth Reynolds. She's a program specialist for the Iowa Beef Center. She's a wealth of knowledge, a great colleague, and, and we are lucky to track her down and have her be here on the show. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Great. Um, we're going to talk about cow nutrition and I'm going to, I'm going to do what, what I probably would do anyway is like, Hey, what should I feed my cows? Right. <laughs> that, that get that question. Yep. Yep. And that's a, that's a pretty general question, but, um, pretty general question, but people come in there and they'll say, Hey doc, what should I feed my cows or what should I vaccinate with yep. or whatever. But for you and your expertise, what would be your next question? Well, first question is what's their base forage or feed stuff that they're on. I mean, where are you located? And what's available to you is pr pretty much the primary question you got to figure out before you can start coming up with any type of a ration to go along with their diet or supplement with whatever forage they're on. Yeah. So, so we got to define acres, forage availability, animal unit type things. Kind of not necessarily. I mean, okay. for the most part, when we, it's great to have all that information. A lot of times we don't necessarily uh, stocking great in animal units. Um, the best is when you can talk in animal units, but re registering that an animal unit isn't one cow or one pair that it's a thousand pound animal and that needs to be adjusted appropriately. Um, kind of where you're at regionally kind of varies in what the standard language is, but that is the best measure. But and when somebody comes and asks, what do I need to be feeding my cows or how do I need to supplement them? Biggest thing is like, what are they on? So are you, do you have corn stalks available, baled, grazed? Are they on some summer pasture? And then you start working into, okay, what's the limiting factor? I mean, how, how long do you think you'll have grass um, where that can be their primary feed? Or are you trying to stretch it if it's a anticipated drought year? corn stalks, how long have they been out there? Are they needing to have a little extra supplement on there because they've already been on that corn stalk field for 30 days and are running out of the goody a little bit. But Yep. So beyond the what I have in the field, then I'm assuming the other questions would be surrounding the, the critters, the cows. Yeah. Well, very good point. You're saying feeding the cows, I'm assuming this time of year, a late gestation animal, but uh, really need to clarify what stage of production are they in? What's their expected empty body weight or meaning are they? A lot of people say 1,200 pound cows. In reality, a 1,400 pound cow is easily the standard, if not more than that, especially in the Midwest. Uh, but when are they expected to calve? What's expected of that cow and her performance measures going forward? So yeah makes a big difference well it used to be at least at least we're getting to expand that now we have 1200 pound cows because it was always everybody had a thousand pound cow well yeah <laughs> until the... you weighed them right yeah <laughs> and and so i i think you're right so so anything else besides you know defining the cows their weight their stage of production or or the what's available 
also what uh, supplement options are going to be available for you sure. is do you have whole corn in the bin? Great. Are you going to be going to a co-op really close to an ethanol plant? That'll make a big difference in what feed stuff is going to fill your limiting nutrient the most economically. When we come back, we'll talk about when we get some of those answers uh, and some of the recommendations. You're watching Doc Talk. Thanks for joining us. DNA Dialogue is brought to you by Igenity Branded, powered by Neogen. So traditionally, buyers of feeder cattle have been operating with very, very little information when they go out to make those purchases. So they might know the hide color of a calf, they know the average weight of the lot, um, they maybe know a little bit about whether it's gotten a vaccine if they're lucky, but other than that, the, the buyers of these cattle assume a lot of risk because they're really just flying blind when it comes to the, the genetic potential of these calves, how they've been treated, um, sort of what all has gone into that calf to get them to that point. The, the advantage to value added programs and verified programs, whether they're through genomics or health protocols, is they give that buyer more confidence th that they're investing their money in a, a product that's gonna pay, in a calf that's gonna pay at the end of the day. So um, th this could be having information about an animal's genetic potential. Um, they're much more confident when they know something about that animal's genetic potential, that when they put that calf in the feed yard, they put that calf on the rail, that the phenotype that that calf expresses is, is ultimately um, what those, those genetic tests might, uh, might have said. So at the end of the day, uh, what these value added programs, um, whether they're genomics, whether they're health protocols, um, they're helping these buyers be more confident that what they're investing in is, is really what they're gonna get delivered and that those animals are gonna go on downstream and perform in the feedlot and, and on the rail. We know how expensive it is to keep and maintain heifers. What is also the fallout of those heifers if they're not the correct ones you're keeping and maintaining? We want to do as much as we can to get it right before we spend the money to impact our herd further down that road and keep successive females out of the wrong type of females. Igenity Beef. Contact your Neogen Territory Manager to test today. Bovalis Nasal Gen 3 offers young calves unrivaled protection against devastating respiratory diseases, including IBR, PI3, and BRSV. And it has a unique blue shadow, so there's no second guessing which animals have been vaccinated. To up your protection, choose Bovalis Nasal Gen 3 PMH, the first and only intranasal that protects against viral and bacterial pneumonia. Talk to your veterinarian and visit nasalgen.com to learn more. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Beth Reynolds, who is the program specialist for the Iowa Beef Center. When we left, we kind of set this up. And so let's talk, let's talk about different answers you get on, okay, they're in the field. So let's say the, the first answer is they're, they're gonna be turned out on grass pasture this summer, um, but it's, we're gonna have short grass. So what are some things that would you, you would start to, to think about? Okay, well, and and it's a spring cabin herd, so they're calves on the side. Okay, so when we start talking summer pasture or spring turnout, a yep. lot um, definitely varies uh, across regions, right? But in Iowa and Missouri and a lot of this Midwestern area, we have a really big spring flush with our forage where there's really rapid growth right away, and then it tapers off. We have our summer slump because they're all cool season or the cool season base anyways in our perennial pastures. And then uh, in the fall, we'll get a little bit of a growth, but not near what our spring flush is. But the biggest thing we talk about spring turnout is making sure you're turning out when there's enough grass left. Otherwise, just sheer intake is gonna be the limiting factor. There's a lot of discussion in various articles out there on, well, you gotta give them, those, those are just lush, wet pastures. You gotta give them something dry to chew on. and um, in reality, the biggest limiting factor when it's that high moisture content is just the grass isn't as nutrient dense packed as it is otherwise. So it's not really that they can't handle all that water. Cows drink a lot of water every yeah. day. The water isn't limiting, it's just sheer intake. And a lot of that is driven by height and bite size and 
how many bites can she eat per day. Um, so if you're spring turnout, if you're talking about supplement needs, the best, I mean, for your pasture health is to delay turnout if you can. Um, keep them on your winter feed source until there is adequate growth. Get six inches plus. Um, and then typically you're playing catch up trying to hit the spring flush, but you're not limiting those cows on uh, their feed intake. Right. Um, and really our prime pasture is that early well mid spring early summer pasture and honestly if your cows have to be supplemented at that point in time even though it's peak requirements hitting uh peak lactation and stuff that's uh that's our best feed available so if you're having to supplement you might want to question whether your cows fit the environment very well but that's a whole nother topic, right? But that would be more like protein energy. We, we would still have vitamins, minerals, or... Yes. To, yep. to so that's put out... Most, yeah, definitely getting to protein energy um, requirements. When we're talking about supplementation, their main supplement they need year-round, but especially in the spring pasture, is mi a good mineral program. When you're getting that early turnout lush forages, those forages are really high in potassium, which is antagonistic for magnesium in the... Um, gut and so that's why we talk about high mag mineral and why it's necessary not because there's not very much magnesium in the plant it's there but it's because the high potassium ties that up and then um, even if you have magnesium in your supplement there's not enough there to really be absorbed because it's tied and passes through the animal rather than entering the bloodstream so high mag mineral in spring um, is definitely our supplement emphasis and then as you get into summer you can get go back and out of that seasonal mineral and get to some of your more base mineral packages uh, or if you have a breeder's pack you want to use or something like that is an option as well. Perfect. Well we're going to take a break. When we come back we'll talk more about uh, what's in the field and what's available with Beth Reynolds. We're here at Iowa State. You're watching Doc Talk. Thanks for joining us. Success in the cattle business hinges on a lot of different people playing their part, from the vet to the cowboy and the nutritionist to the feed truck driver. You rely on them to get their job done right, and so do your cattle. Your expectations for the vaccines you use should be no different. By Meat is Cattle Vaccines were developed and are made and sold by men and women in the cattle business. No smoke and mirrors, just real world protection that you can rely on. Go to buymeatabiologicals.com to learn more. In the livestock industry, castration is a common practice to ensure proper herd management. All methods are painful, regardless of the age of the animal. At Solvit, we could not ignore the clear industry need for better castration solutions. So we developed Lidoband, a novel lidocaine impregnated elastrator, addressing the pain associated with band castration. It provides local anesthesia throughout the castration process. Lidoband, a small device that can make a big difference. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Beth Reynolds. She is a program specialist for the Iowa Beef Center covering the entire state of Iowa and beyond. She's a wealth of knowledge on cow-calf nutrition and production and management and uh, is somebody that really gets out and works with our industry and we're very thankful for what you do. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about summer slump then, because we, we got the spring and we got them supplemented. We've talked about vitamin mineral. What, what do we need to be looking for or, or thinking about in, during that time? Okay, so summer slump, talking supplement options is kind of our emphasis. Again, make sure they still have consistent access to their mineral. Most mineral programs, uh, consistency is key. If you have it out there all the time, they're not going to gorge themselves and go through it as fast as if you're really consistent with it, monitoring salt and take all that yep. um, good stuff. But uh, other supplement considerations for the summer slump. So this is when our production drops. Um, typically we're past that peak lactation time frame and our highest peak requirements, but it kind of depends on what your pasture options are and how you've managed that pasture throughout. So if you've been pretty intensely rotationally grazing and have that still in fairly vegetative, even though you don't have as much growth, you can get by with less, but if you are really taking a hit summer slump in terms of production, 
one of our primary grasses in this area, even as you get farther north, is still fescue. If you think summer slump, a lot of that is driven by heat suppressing those cool season grasses growth, but the heat is also uh, fescue toxicity essentially works as a type of heat stress, right? Yep. Um, and so you're having that combination effect. And so a lot of our emphasis on some of supplement options, uh, if you're trying to stretch pasture, is to try to get a little bit of an energy supplement because that's had some benefits shown with fescue toxicity, whether that's a displacing just some of the diet and also just improving some room and function as well. Well, and, and we can feed cattle, you know, feeder cattle. They come in off of fescue pastures, they're heat intolerant, but as we feed them grain, um, they come out of that heat intolerance. And so there's probably some physiology there as well. Definitely. Just decreasing the amount of endophyte infested yeah. fescue that they take yeah. in. Basically, a lot of dilution is the solution type of yeah. mentality and mowing. on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's depending on how your grazing management is gone. If you have a lot of seed heads out there, you might be better off just go, taking a mower and clipping that seed head. I know it takes a lot of fuel and equipment in order to go mow pasture and some isn't accessible, but uh, controlling that endophyte really has some performance implications, especially for those cows that bred fairly early, maybe not the earliest in the breeding season, if they hit that heat stress period, they're pretty prone to sloughing that calf. Early abortions with fescue toxicity are something so, to consider. So when you talk about supplementing them some energy, what are some of the common? Well, in Iowa, corn is king, right? So uh, that's definitely an effective supplement option. Um, the one thing to consider with corn is it is starch based. So as you increase your levels of corn, um, you'll be, there are some, if you get to reach a point, you'll be reducing fiber digestibility, and then they're not getting as much out of the forage as they are if you would have switched to digestible fiber or something like that. And um, so some of those would be like soy holes or distillers, distillers. Grains, yeah. uh, gluten, um, but you could definitely can effectively use corn. Uh, if you're going to be running this time of year, you probably have a solid idea if you're going to be pretty short grass or if you um, are getting to whatever your target end date, whether that's Thanksgiving, you want to bring them home or whatever. The supplementation level and whether it's a starch or a fiber-based supplement will make a difference on whether it displaces any of their forage intake. A fiber is more effective at doing that than a starch. Um, and then also considering it's a lot more convenient to do like every other day or every third day supplementation, but if like forage intake, if you're supplementing so that they don't go through the pasture as fast, uh, every other day supplementation will not displace forage intake. Right. Like a daily supplement um, potentially can, depending on how much is fed. Great, so if you're just doing it for, for performance and, and uh, body condition, you can do the every other day, but if you're doing it to keep them out of the fescue as much and, and prevent some of that, uh, limit some of the forage intake, you gotta do them every day. Yeah, pretty much. Energy versus protein, how well they respond will vary. They do a little better every other day with protein supplementation, but it, in general, correct. Forage intake every other day, don't do. Uh, talking supplementations with Beth Reynolds. Thanks for watching. The cost of an open cow these days is very expensive. It's hard at times to dedicate a half a day or a whole day to leave your practice to go palpate cows. And so Alertus Test has helped speed the process up of getting preg rates back to the owners. And so free up time for diagnostics or working in your clinic. It also will help generate revenue, not being on site to do the testing. When a new calf hits the ground, the clock starts ticking. A belly full of colostrum gives them their best chance, but if they don't get any, time starts running out. That's when you grab a bag of Oxford Ag Colostrum in their patented feeding system. It's simple, you fill it with warm water, shake it to mix, feed it with a tube or a nipple, and you are done. No bucket, no bottle, no mess, and right on time. Ask for it by name wherever animal health supplies are sold. When the ones who have your heart need your help, count on us for everything they deserve delivered fast.
We'll work hard for you so you can work hard for your dreams. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. We're here at Iowa State University where I'm here with Beth Reynolds. She is a program specialist for the Iowa Beef Center. And if you haven't seen the Iowa Beef Center's website, you should go to it. It's incredible wealth of knowledge. And this is somebody that's put a lot of content into it, uh, as well as answering questions around our state on cow-calf nutrition production and different things uh, to that. But we've talked about spring and the high mag uh, supplementation because of, of it getting uh, tied up. We've talked about summer slump and our grass going down, extending uh, grass, um, you know, and, and different ways to supplement with every day versus every other day, depending on what your goal is of why you're supplementing. Um, but now we get to the point in time, at least around here, where we, <laughs> we're starting, to, we don't have grass. Yeah. And now you're not we're supplementing, looking, you're feeding. <laughs> yeah, we're feeding now. So let's let's talk about about feeding cows in the the winter, the yeah. fall and winter. Okay, so I mean we can touch on fall pretty quick. I mean, weaning time frame. Get calves weaned and then your cows are at their lowest requirements they'll ever have in their production cycle. Right. So that's they're pretty easy to feed and maintain at that point in time. However, one thing really to pay attention to is make sure that weaning time frame you get a good idea of your herd body condition score because if you're going to put weight on a cow for calving or leading up to the breeding season because you still want her to breed back next year this is your time to do it if she's post calving trying to put weight on a cow um is really hard and yeah. really expensive i guess and the NRC, you can do it but it's expensive the nrc has defined you know we used to guess but seven percent of the cow's body weight 7.7 percent is roughly a body condition score. So if they weigh a thousand pounds, it's it's seventy seven pounds. Yep. If it's you know if they weigh more, then take it times seven point seven percent. Yep, good explanation. But <laughs> yeah, we say ideal body condition score is a five. They perform still really well if you get to a six. Um, so you could argue that it's a bit better, higher. But remember, higher body condition score is more expensive to feed. So there's yep. um, trade offs. And and in general, we try to target body condition score to be a five or above at calving because it's really correlated with um, colostrum quality, how long it takes the cow to stand and calf to stand. Uh, and most, well, I guess they're all important, but uh, really important and it's also her likelihood to breed back the, in the breeding season and how early in the breeding season she'll breed back. And the other component of that is trying to get from calving to breeding, even though that's going to be your peak requirements and it's hard to feed above her requirements necessarily but still have a positive plan of nutrition where she's making progress on that yeah because the third just trimester and lactation is just so demanding yes, energetic very much it's it's okay if your cows lose a little weight because it's just hard to feed them but understand that that's the only time you want them to ever experience any of that and if you can maintain it where you don't visually notice that's even better but that fall time frame, best time to add weight to those cattle. And then we get into winter and tend to do more rations or even if it's just hay that you're feeding them, but something to really pay attention to along with just weight. Again, bring up mineral nutrition. Um, all of the calf, calves minerals are accumulated either in the liver at this point in time or, well, the majority at this point in time, or it's through her milk, especially through that colostrum, mineral nutrition is important in that aspect. And when we get into this winter feeding period, um, a lot of us have feeds available like corn stalks, distillers, corn silage especially, that um, can have some, they're considered highly antagonistic feedstuffs, meaning they have like for corn silage, if you have some dirt contamination in there when you put it up and siling process, that iron's more available and is that iron is antagonistic to like uh, the calcium and uh, the like copper. manganese yeah. co sulfur co to there's antagonistic relationships with those minerals in the diet so even if you're feeding a mineral feeding them enough mineral if you're feeding feeds that are antagonistic you need to take into account what those relationships are and if you need to boost certain minerals in that time frame to account for that but making sure she has enough in her um her diet because she's setting the calf up for that early health period too because it's not that calf's not going to be getting any minerals from anything other than what she puts in 
at that gestation time frame and then from it's from her milk but those and that a lot of her milk supply is those macro minerals or like calcium magnesium um and that earlier time frame it gets to some of those micro minerals so um mineral is a whole can of worms but um in terms of feeding the cow late gestation is probably your most critical time to make sure you're meeting your requirements for her uh, remember always work with your local veterinarian and nutritionist uh, if you want to know more about what we do at doc talk you can find us on the web at www.doctalktv.com i'm dr dan thompson here with beth reynolds and we'll see you down the road at Merck Animal Health, we're shaping the future of animal health with pioneering science, connected technology, and insights-driven solutions to bring our customers an unparalleled portfolio of choices to improve cattle care and operational efficiency. We support you and your legacy by helping you meet the challenges of today with the innovations of tomorrow.